Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Secrets of the Techno Union. This is a follow-up guide to Darth Lokwitter's Beginner's Guides. This is meant to build teams that will maximize your income in various areas of the game as soon as we possibly can. It is a long-term focus with the idea that we're going to build these characters and teams in a way to optimize our income for character shards and gear, and that will make it easier to gear up and build characters as we build more teams in the future. For PvP, we will make a few sacrifices on Squad Arena and Grand Arena game modes, so we give it a 6 out of 10. In Events, Conquest, Galactic Challenges, it's a 10 out of 10. This is what the this build is meant to do. In Raids and Guild Events, we give it an 8 out of 10. It's not perfect, but that's definitely a source of income, so it's something we are going to focus on. The mod requirements are moderate. It doesn't require as good of mods as a PvP-based build, and we still do have to have some pretty good speed mods on these various teams, but it's not quite as challenging as something that's really focused on player versus player. The fleet requirements do remain quite challenging. We do need to push the early fleet very hard to get those crystals into our account, make sure we get plenty of refreshes. When we talk about income sources throughout the game, we've got events like Galactic Challenges, Assault Battles, Resource Events, which are Credit High Smugglers Run, things like that, Heroic Battles, and Omega Battles, so we have to try to grab as many of those as we can early on. We also have Fleet and Squad Arena that we have to try to optimize. In terms of Guild, you have the Raids, Territory Wars, Territory Battles, Conquest Game Mode, and we do have to think about that Rancor Relic 8 materials, um, we've seen from the new Galactic Legend Kenobi that there are going to be Relic 8 requirements going forward. So we do need to prepare and plan to get into a guild that's able to do Rancor. Uh, if we want to maximize our income, that has to be included in the income sources. Techno Union Theory, what we're thinking is these various sources that we talked about are really divided between personal gains for the events squad arena, fleet arena, things like that. And the guild side of things with raids, territory battles, the Wat Tambor mission, the Kiati Mundi mission, uh, challenge tier rank or. And if we ignore either side of this, either the personal side or the guild side, then that's going to slow down our income. And Wat Tambor says, reduced income is unacceptable. So the outline, we're gonna do three phases of the build. We expect this to take between 10 and 15 months in total, depending on your efficiency with the account. First thing we're going to focus on is the Imperial Troopers, and then we're going to bridge a little bit with Jedi and Sith teams, and then we're going to go into the Clone Troopers at the end of the build. So when we start to establish the characters and teams to maximize the, the rewards, uh, Fleet is going to be important. We need those crystals, we need those refreshes, we need to make sure that we're placing top 10 in fleet. So this is an add-on to the beginner's guide. So please go back, watch the beginner's guide, understand the need for the geos, the geo fleet, how we're gonna build that, how we're gonna focus on it. This add-on does not take anything away from our need to maximize and optimize that fleet's performance. Guild is critical. By the end of this build path, we want to be qualified for a guild 250 million galactic power plus. That's just a guideline. We're going to be focused more on what the guild is doing, but generally that's a, that's a guideline we want to follow. And to get qualified for a very good guild within one year of play is uh, going to be a challenge, but that's what we're that's what we're in for. To get recruited into a good guild, remember. The criteria are more or less 600 tickets per day. You have to guarantee that. Participation in all the different areas of the, the game that your guild is going to participate in. You want to be able to get a Watt Tambor shard on the dark side GOTB. And you want to be a, get, able to get a Kiati Mundi shard on the light side GOTB. And uh, building it in this way is also going to give us two teams quite early that can uh, put up good numbers on the challenge to your rank or and uh, you will only have two teams so more or less you'll have a phase two and a phase three team but still it'll allow you to put some numbers on the board and show your new guild that you're competent for doing those kinds of things 
So the first phase, the trooper phase, we're looking at the vulture droid still. Remember, we really have to farm that. We need range trooper off of um, the 3A on the dark side. You can get that as early as level 12. And we do want to force farm that where as soon as we can, we just start doing the range trooper twice a day with that 25 gem refresh in between. Veers comes off of two nodes, 4C um, and 6C on the light side, and also comes out of the guild event store. We'll talk about that more here in a minute. Piet comes off of 6B on the light side, and that's another character that we want to force farm. So if you're looking at this already, you can see we've got uh, six farms with the force farms, two farms for Veers and Hyena Bomber. It could be up to nine hard node farms per day. It's a very aggressive thing to do, very aggressive build to pursue. But we have to get these characters to seven stars as soon as we can. For the purposes of this guide, I am building it as if Piet's going to be a double drop. He's not as of the day that this video is being recorded, but pretty soon into the future, Piet should be a two shard drop and, and should fit quite well into this build. Stark, we're going to get out of the gear, uh, guild store. Gideon does have a node, but we're just really going to get him out of the cantina to lighten up the load for what we need to do with our light side and dark side energy. Now, during this phase, our fleet energy is already going to be going into the requirements for Jedi Knight Revan. So because our troopers really take focus of the light side, dark side energy, that leaves our fleet energy to work on Zalbar, Bastila Shan, and then eventually Jolie Bindo. We've talked about this before. He's a little further on in the fleet nodes and not easy to get to as an early game player. So it'll probably be after at level 85 that you can access Jolie Bindo. But when we can get to him, we're going to want to start farming his shards out of the fleet. Uh, Cantina farms after you have Gideon. And remember, we also have the Geos out of there. So you need to build the Geos. You need to build Gideon. And then you can uh, move on to T3M4 and mission during this phase if you can get to them. Okay? The clones, there are several clones that come from the stores. Fives comes from the Cantina store. Rex and Echo come from the fleet store. Uh, after you have your Geo fleet, the ships and the characters all to seven stars, then you can start picking up Rex and Echo from the fleet store in addition to some of the other characters that we're looking for out of there from the beginner's guide. So to break this all down, during the trooper farming, hard nodes, regular energy, vulture droid times two until five stars, then you can back off of it and just farm it single, range trooper times two, piet times two, and if you have energy to farm veers, he shows up on two nodes and you will want to farm him on two nodes. Veers is possible for the guild event tokens and while we typically would advise people to hoard those guild uh, event tokens and not spend them on anything, uh, it's possible that you will have so much pressure on your regular currency that you won't be able to keep up with Veers farming at the same rate as everybody else. And you may need to take some purchases uh, of him out of the guild event token store. If you want to wait a bit longer and let him build from the hard nodes, you can. If you're willing to spend a little bit of that currency, at first it can delay uh, a build into Malik or gas or something later, but we'll leave that to the discretion of the players. It's a possibility there, and because this build has so much pressure on the regular energy, it might be something that's worth looking into if you're willing to do it. Fleet hard nodes, we've got Bastila, Zalbar, and eventually Jolie Bindo. Cantina, we've got Geos that we have to build. We've got Gideon that we have to build. Jedi Knight Anakin, we still want to have some Jedi, and we do want to build Jedi Knight Anakin out of there. T3 and Mission. For mods, I would really recommend farming mainly speed. Farm a lot of speed. Um, to optimize the characters, you might need other mod sets, but all of these characters can be just fine with speed, uh, especially very early in the game. And because you do want your troopers to go fast, getting some good speed mods with good speed subs is really the priority. You need at least three regular refreshes, two fleet refreshes, and top 10 um, to get 200 and more crystals is really the goal even before we hit 85 with this kind of a build. In the fleet store, save up currency, 
like I like we talked about before, just don't spend anything for a couple days. Let it build up to around three or four thousand. You want to buy Grievous whenever he's in the shop. You want to buy Vader whenever you see him in the shop. You need to finish your Geos and their ships, and then you've got Echo and Rex that you can get out of the fleet store. With uh, with with the troopers, we do really need speed, and for PvP, um, they need to be really fast. For PvE, which is player versus environment, for anybody who's not familiar with that terminology, PvP is when you play against other people. PvE is when you're playing against the game modes that uh, have pre-built characters. So for those game modes, speed is not as critical, but having good speed will make a difference in how well you can complete, especially in the assault battles. So start farming a lot of speed mods and look for good speed subs. Don't worry much about other mod sets. Um, you'll have Jedi, you'll have Sith, you'll have clones, and they can also be happy with speed. It's just fine. In terms of the PvP turn order, I want to talk a little bit about how to turn your trooper into a team that will do okay in PvP. The turn order is important, and in the past, troopers have played very poorly on defense because the AI... Uh, doesn't do the skill selection, anything like what you would want to prioritize as a player. However, Gideon has some interesting mechanics, and potentially you can really make this team hard to put up with on defense. So once you set it in your squad arena, it won't drop as far as typically people are used to the trooper teams. Troopers have always been a team that you can fight your way up, and then they just lose on defense. But there's a way to build them now where they really hold their own on defense. So Gideon, we have to make him fast. We want him to be 300 speed or 320 speed at Relic. It's not hard. The character is already 198 speed at Relic level. So getting him to 300 speed it really isn't, isn't that much of a challenge. Uh, Piet needs to go next. He needs to be at least 270 speed or 290 once he hit Relic's. Stark needs to be 250, and then Veer's at 240. By the time you get down there, it's really not much of a challenge to build. And then Range Trooper's our last trooper, and his speed is not as critical. If you can get him up to 200, 230, something like that, it's great. But uh, but but he's the, the, the least of your worries, and he'll be fine. So what we want to do to get this defensive team working correctly is we need Gideon to get around to his second turn. We would really love to control the situation, drain the opponent's turn meter, and put our troopers at an advantage with a mass assist that will give them a lot of turn meter. But we don't get that with Gideon. He does the Darksaber lunge first. So once we have Piet in the group, under the Veer's leadership, they get 10% turn meter for each buff that they gain. So Gideon will go first, he'll swing the Darksaber, that gets 10%. Now if we go back and we look at the speeds, you'll notice that the next speed one is uh, Gideon's at 300, and the next speed is 10% below that. So once you get him at 300, your Piet needs to be at 270 to be sure that that 10% speed is going to generate Piet going immediately. He'll do suborbital strike. He likes to do his area effect for some reason as the first skill. It's not good, but that's what he does. That gets us another 10% because it gives us another stack of the Emperor's Trap. Stark will then go, and he'll also use his area effect. That'll give us another 10%. Veers will go, do Ruthless Assault. He takes a turn, and all other troopers take a turn. And when they do, they all generate an instance of Emperor's Trap, which gives us 50%. And then Ranged, when he does his turn, he'll do Steady. And that special ability calls another character to attack, and then somebody assists. So even if Range is the one that assists, you'll get... Um, range troopers turn as well as whoever he calls to attack that'll get us two more stacks of the emperor's trap so if we add up three tens a 20 and a 50 that's a hundred percent so that means if Gideon went at let's say 305 then the speed count is still at 305 and he gets his second turn and on his second turn he will use control the situation drain their turn meter get a mass assist and um Assuming that your troopers can get a kill somewhere in these first two turns, then, you know, that'll kick in and they'll keep going. So in an early game setting, if you get a couple of these troopers to relic level and you get them fast enough, 
this team can really um, hold its own in PvP. You'll be able to do well on offense using the right skill, and you'll still be okay to hold on defense uh, against early game teams. They're not going to be able to, to, to withstand the barrage of, of bullets coming in from these troopers. So what does Dunn look like? Again, we're talking about challenge to your Rancor as a reasonable thing that we have to prepare for, and that means that all of these troopers eventually have to go to Relic 5. Um, Veers, Piet, Stark, I misspelled his name, Stack, that's actually Stark, sorry, <laughs> I just noticed that. But uh, they, they want to go all to Relic 5, and the Zetas on Aggressive Tactician, Emperor's Trap, Imperial Intelligence, and Control the Situation. And then Range Trooper, um, he, he can be functional below Relic levels, but it, once we get to the point where we want to be in Challenge Tier Rancor in any way, he does have to be Relic 5. That'll also help us with the uh, uh, squad arena stuff, and it will also help us in assault battles to make sure that we don't die to the initial opening volley. In assault battles, the, they have preloaded turn meter and go really fast, so uh, especially at um, Challenge Tier 2, you most likely will have to be able to take a few hits before your turns kick in. So that range trooper will have to be at relic levels to soak that initial damage and get through that uh, easily. All right, the problem with going into troopers as the next team, we, we have a problem with Shock T. So Shock T appears on a fleet hard node, and that section of hard nodes is really not easy to get to. Um, fleet Normal 5E is a very challenging node to get past, and most people get stuck on that node for quite some time. If you're building the Hyena Bomber, uh, basically when you get your Hyena Bomber to five or six stars, you should be tanky enough to be able to get through that node. But that's usually, let's say, five months into the game, four or five months before you're able to move past those nodes. And we're looking to have these troopers up and running, you know, right after we hit 85, not to relic level, but at least to seven stars. So it, it provides us with a gap that we really can't fill by just going straight into the clone troopers. Um, and we do want Shock T for that leadership, and she's required for the Kiati Mundi mission, so... What we're going to do is we're going to make a little bridge here between the Imperial Troopers and the Clone Troopers. So we already saw that we were going to take some of the JKR um, requirements out of Fleet, and we're going to switch that over. We're going to take that out of regular energy and work on that. Guild update. In this bridge phase, you're, you should be working your Geos up and getting them Watt ready at 16,500 Galactic Power each. You're working on your troopers, getting them up and running. If you aren't already, this is time to take a close look at your guild. Um, by now, I mean, you're barely level 85. You're just getting things up and running. But you should already be able to apply for guilds that are doing dark side geo territory battles and light side hoth territory battles. Um, and if you do get into a guild that's, let's say, 150 to 220 million in that range, You'll probably only be in that guild for three or four months. You'll outgrow the guild very quickly, and you'll need to move up into a better guild. But this is the point where you really need to check and say, I need to be in a good guild uh, in, that's doing a lot of these events and getting me a lot of currency. So check that. Make sure, spend the time that it takes to get into a good guild. Really, you won't regret it. You need that guild event token too, for sure. Um, and, and getting into a good guild that gets you that, is, is critical for this build. In the Jedi Knight Revan phase, you're going to transition to this and you're going to be working on taking your troopers to Relic. So you're working on Relics for your troopers. Once you finish your trooper farm, you're going to continue the Vulture, the Hyena Bomber, and then you're going to start picking up Bastila Shan, Jolie Bindo, and Zalbar out of the light side, dark side energy nodes. You'll still be taking them out of fleet as well. And then Fleet, as soon as you can get to that Shock T node, you will start to force farm that, that Shock T node. And you'll drop any of the Bastila, Jolie, Zalbar. You know, don't worry about those. Uh, we took as much as of that as we could out of Fleet. But then get farming that Shock T as soon as you can and make sure you hit that node twice a day. As you finish the requirements for Genonite Revan, we're going to pick up Bastila, Sean, Fallen. 
to support our Sith team. We're going to be picking up Wicket and Mother Talzin as hard node farms. Now those seem like really weird and random things to shove into our build, but there is a reason for it. There's Endor Escalation and the Defense of Dathomir. Those are heroic events. And they each have this event that says, Unlock Challenged here with a 7-star Wicket. And Unlock with a 7-star Mother Talzin. What's not clear from the text or the way that it works, you don't need to have the Ewoks. You don't need to be able to do the mission in any way. Once you get to a 7-star Wicket, you can do the Challenged here. The challenge tier has two Zeta materials. This is a guide about farming and optimizing the amount of materials you get from the game. So we've got to reach for those. We've got to make a grab for those four extra Zetas that we can get, Zeta pieces every month. Got to go for it. So we're going to do Wicket and Mother Talzin as hard node farms. In the Cantina, we're going to work on Arc Trooper and then Sith Empire Trooper as we get the energy to do that. And again, Sith Empire Trooper doesn't necessarily fit directly into the build, but he is going to support our Sith team and make that team better. So we're going to want him over there. And even at this point, I'm not going to end the video now, but this is the point where you already need to be thinking about the next steps, what you're going to be doing with the account once you get this build underway. Because as these farms finish up, you already need to have defined what you're going to work as your next farms. All right. And then for anybody who hasn't seen this or needs proof or doesn't believe me, here's an example of the Endor Escalation battle with the tier one, zero stars, never completed, requirements not met. And the second tier, bonus tier, three stars, requirements met, good to go. Okay. So that's just an example that uh, it really does work that way and you don't have to complete the tier one to unlock the bonus tier. All right, Jedi Knight Revan event prep, if anybody's not familiar with it, what mission in Zalbar, as long as you can get them to like level 60, uh, gear seven, something like that, they're fine. T3, uh, level 65, maybe gear eight. And then Bindo, uh, eventually you'll wanna take him to Relic, so you know, put as many gear tiers on him as you can afford. And you want the Zeta on that looks pretty bad, so that can be part of your event prep. It doesn't have to be, but it can be. And then Bastila, you definitely want to build her up to gear 11 or gear 12 for your team anyway. So you can build her up uh, before the event. Uh, we think that Jedi Knight Revan can unlock five or six months in. So let's say it takes you about 100 days to get to level 85. That's between three and four months. And if you've already been farming the requirements out of fleet, it should take you about another six weeks or so to finish farming out the requirements and get this event underway. All right, what Dunn looks like. With the Jedi, or Jedi team here, Jedi Knight Revan, um, for the purposes of this build, you can leave him at gear 12 uh, with the Zeta on General and Savior. Um, for Bindo, you can Relic. Um, Bindo, you want it Relic 3. Uh, you want to put Zeta on, that looks pretty bad. Grandmaster Yoda, gear 12. He's a big damage dealer, but uh, you can relic him if you want, but you don't have to overcommit if you don't. You don't need to. You can do, especially tier one of these assault battles, you'll be fine. Bastila, gear 11 or 12, like we talked about. And then Anakin can be in here until you get Raid Kenobi going. And then Raid Kenobi, you want to have gear 12 or relic uh, eventually. So you can work on him as much as you like. The, the main thing is to get Bindo to Relic levels so that once you're in these Assault Battles, as your Jedi die off, Bindo can just simply bring them back and you can just keep running. For the Sith side of it, we've got Emperor Palpatine at Gear 12, Zeta his leadership, Vader at Gear 12, or Relic level if you want to with the Zeta on Merciless Massacre. Dooku should be at least Gear 10, Bastila Fallen should be gear 11 or 12. And then the Sith Empire Trooper. Um, you know, it depends on how much you want to commit to him, but he can be anywhere up to gear 12, depending. And, and again, that's, that's eventual. It doesn't have to be that way right at the start. Um, and you can still do pretty well in these events. Rebels. We're not really working on the Rebel Tag Beyond Phoenix. So we looked at this. 
uh, looked at building potentially a Mon Mothma team or a CLS team, different rebel ideas on how to close out uh, some more assault battles. But at the end of the day, they just don't have the payback that justifies the characters that you would build. So we're going to leave this uh, with just building the Phoenix and whatever we get to there that we're done with. Um, again, when we're in this phase, when we're finishing up Jedi Knight Revan and we're starting to go and work on our clones, uh, by the time you have any relic troopers and you're working on your clones, you got Geos ready for the Watt mission, and this is the time to take a look now at your next level guild, generally 240 to 300 million galactic power. You want a guild that's either doing the challenge to your Rancor or is trying to recruit people to finish out the challenge to your Rancor. And by telling them, look, I'm going to have two good teams, I'm going to have a good phase two team, I'm going to have a good phase three team, and I'll put up uh, decent scores and promise them participation. And uh, it should get you into a guild. It may take you some time. You may have to do 10, 15 applications before you find a guild that's willing to take you. But uh, you can certainly, if you have the focus and you know what you're building and you know how to talk to them about this, um, the, you'll, you'll find a guild. You'll get invited. All right, for the clone troopers themselves, Shock T, Rex, Fives, Echoes, and Arc all go to 7-star while you're stabilizing your Jedi Knight Revan and your Sith teams. You'll want to bring relic, uh, bring fives to relic seven, and relic five all of the other clones eventually. Uh, while you're working on gear, gearing them to relic, uh, again, like we said, you do need to figure out your next project. You can't just work these guys to relic without planning your next steps. Don't overshoot Rex relics. You do need to research the Kiati Mundi mission for yourself. We're not going to make that part of this video and do a guide on the Kiati Mundi mission. There's plenty of information out there. But do understand what that mission looks like. That's what you're building these Shakti troopers to do. They're an excellent raid team. They're good in Rancor. They're good in territory battles. They're good in a lot of different game modes. But ultimately, you have to build them in a way where you could succeed in this Kiati Mundi mission. That's the goal. So research that and make sure you know how you're building these clones as you finish out this team. Okay, so what's next? What are the next steps? Uh, originally, we had talked about going into the Sith Eternal Empire as part of this build because we've built a Sith team. That could easily have some of the C requirements in it. We've already built a trooper team. That's part of the C requirements. So our original thought was to do that. But at the end of the day, when we look at this account, if we just go through the Imperial Troopers and the Clone Troopers and we say, look, at that point, you could make a lot of different decisions. You could go with Darth Revan. You've already worked on a Bastila Sean Fallen for your Sith team and you've got the Jedi Knight Revan done. You can go for C if you want. You've got a lot of his requirements underway. Uh, you can go for Gas. The, the Padme team is just a stone's throw away. We've already worked on Anakin, Ahsoka. We've worked on the Geos to unlock Padme. So... Um, you know, that gets you Padme, the Ewoks, the Separatist droids, the Ewoks build C-3PO that are required for the gas event. So you're already underway for the gas event in a way, and those teams will build onto what you've already got. And uh, basically, at this point, you can really do whatever you want because, you know, just closing out three assault battles per month gets you all of the stuff over here. 180 character shards, ship shards, purple gear, omegas. Tons of stuff. You can see just tons of stuff you're getting out of these assault battles. And that's only three. Once you get this build done, you get the Jedi Knight Revan, you get the uh, Sith up and running and the clone troopers up and running, you're looking at potentially five of these battles a month. And then you just take all these numbers that you see there times five. It really is an impressive amount of stuff. You'll be getting, uh, let's say, at least a tier seven box from the Galactic Challenges. You should be able to score box four or five at least early on. And by the time you get those clone troopers relict, you should be able to score box six on Conquest. Uh, you'll be getting the Pit, the Sith Triumvirate raid, the, the HAAT raid, Wat Tambor shards. So with all of this stuff coming into your account, you can... Uh, you can go whatever direction you want from here, and whatever you build, you're going to be able to build with 
pretty much the best efficiency possible this early in the game. I want to talk about another concept. So with a lot of these other builds, we can talk about phases and we can do one phase and then build into the second phase and then build into the third phase. But with this particular build, it, it's not as easy to divide it up into phases because the clones generally don't come from, you know, regular energy and we need a lot of different things and it can get confusing. So what you can do is you can put together a farming list like this that takes you through several different things toward your end goal. And then let's say you're willing to do five f hard farms, right? So we do range piet, veers, vulture, and we're, you know, doubling up on range and piet. And, you know, oh, we just ran out of energy, right? So let's do range piet and double up on vulture and buy veers out of the guild event store, you know, and that gets us further ahead. Um, you know, let's say we're willing to commit to only four hard farms. So out of this, you can, you can pick how many hard farms you're doing and keep those nodes going. And then, you know, each time you take a step, okay, next is Bindo, next is Bastila, next is Bastila Fallen, next is Wicket, Mother Talzin. And then at the end of this farming list, I did put Dark Trooper because I'll tell you, those five troopers that we specified above will get you uh, good placement, good stuff in, in all kinds of different game modes. But this dark trooper is really an over-the-top character. And once you get into challenge tier rank war and build that dark trooper, I built a dark trooper on my main account and I took my damage from around 900,000 uh, to over 2 million with the dark trooper. So he is just a ridiculous character in this trooper team. And uh, it's worth building him um, on a long farm. You know, he's a single shard drop now, but uh, it doesn't matter. You know, put him into your farming plan. And then whatever you do next after that, if it's Ewoks for gas or whatever it is, you just add that onto your farming plan and you just keep um, working on those nodes as your energy becomes available. Uh, same thing for Cantina, Fleet, Shops. You just make a list of all the characters that you're trying to build, and you just kind of have this farming list somewhere where you can read it. And you don't need it all the time because once you know what you're doing, um, you'll, uh, you'll follow the list, and then it's only when you're finishing up a farm you look at the list and you figure out what the next thing on the list is. But that keeps you uh, pushing shards into the account. And for this, because of the way that this works, Getting characters to seven stars is much more important than it is in some of these other builds because in order to do the assault battles in certain events, you have to have seven star characters. So getting the troopers to seven stars as soon as possible even takes priority over gearing up characters in this build. Don't leave your fleet behind. Make sure you pay attention to your geos. But, uh, but the farming is important. Always remember to farm your mods, get those speed mods going. And uh, as always, we finish off the video reminding everybody to have fun. This is a fun build. The troopers are a fun team to play. Uh, they're fun in squad arena. They're, they're fun in, in grand arena challenge. They're, they're, they're fun. Yeah, so you'll, you'll enjoy the troopers. You'll enjoy the clone troopers too. I really believe that this account has a bunch of teams that are very uh, rewarding to play. And then uh, you're set up to go into whatever galactic uh, legend character that you want to play. So I think that's good, and I think it's a fun way to build the account. Thanks for watching. Please remember, subscribe to the channel so you can see more videos like this in the future. Thank you very much for your time, and I will see you in the next Holocron.